Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Krem2 News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. Great to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy. We start with weather because strong winds will push through the region this evening, right? Uh -huh. Along with some storms and rain comes with that too. Yeah, and some cooler temperatures as well. So we had 90s yesterday. We're close to 90 today. We'll show you the current temperatures just ahead of this cool front. 86 degrees in the Spokane Valley as well as in the Coeur Lane, 87 at Spirit Lake. So it's a little bit cooler, but still above average as you can see. Nine Mile Falls is at 87 degrees. Medical Lake right now checks in at 88. When you look at the satellite and radar picture, here's the rain. Not much, but just a band of rain and more showers moving up from the southwest. So I think, yeah, we're going to see some rain showers tonight. It will be in the evening and overnight hours, and it should clear out just in time for tomorrow. So we'll look forward to that again. Here's the first band of showers out. It looks like it's just now reached the Grand Coulee area and also over towards Moses Lake. Uh, but you get the idea that uh, things is are uh, changes are afoot, as they say, as cooler weather is on the way. We'll look for an overnight low of 57 with chance a few showers overnight. Tomorrow will start out cloudy, then become partly cloudy by the afternoon. And we talked about it being a cool front. Look for a daytime high of 80 degrees. Pretty darn comfortable for the weekend forecast, I've got sunny and 82, mostly sunny skies on Sunday and 80 degrees. So we've just this week only had two really super warm days and now we've got comfortable weather ahead of us. Yeah, thanks Tom. Seven seconds. Go. 11 seconds. Shame on you. 11 seconds. Shame on you. Well, that is the family of 35 year old David Novak. A Spokane police officer shot and killed Novak in January. Yeah, today Spokane County Prosecutor Larry Haskell ruled the shooting justified and said that the officer will not face charges. Creme 2's Whitney Ward has more from the news conference where family members really went off on the police and the prosecutor. Yeah, they did. Good afternoon, both of you. Family members were not happy at all today when the county prosecutor said Officer Brandon Rankin was justified in his use of lethal force that ended up killing David Novak. Novak's family confronted Haskell and Police Chief um, Craig Meidel about the shooting and the decision not to prosecute the officer. Novak's sister claimed the family wasn't told of today's press conference by the county. She says instead they found out through someone else. And Haskell said that he did make arrangements to notify the family, but because of some kind of internal error within his office, he says that notification did not actually happen. Now, back in January, neighbors had initially reported that Novak had a gun and was firing shots during a confrontation in the Emerson Garfield neighborhood. That was around 1030 at night. The prosecutor also says officers had ordered Novak to get on the ground and drop what they thought was a rifle or a shotgun, but Novak refused to comply. The next day, police said it was actually a baseball bat that was found at the scene, not a gun. And Novak's mother says officers made a mistake. You know, the legislatures and even the United States Supreme Court give some leeway for officers to make mistakes of fact if they're reasonable simply because they would rather trade away the criminal liability and accept civil liability in some cases. And of course, there's other forums for that sort of thing. But as far as criminal liability goes, I find that Officer Rankin has met the statutory requirements and I won't be filing any charges against him. 11 seconds from when you guys said Spokane to police until you shot my brother. 11 seconds. Who can react in 11 seconds? 50. 11. It's we 11 have the seconds. camera. 11 seconds from when you said Spokane police drop your bat. B-A-T. B-A-T. One of your cops said bat. So Haskell's family says that officers need more training. An investigation will now be carried out to look into department policies and other issues surrounding the shooting. And that investigation will include why some officers reported seeing smoke from a gunshot and why officers thought he was armed with a gun. You can read the full statement from the victim's family attorney, as well as the prosecutor's full report on his decision to not press charges. Just go to creme.com. Jane, Tom, back to you. Hmm. Whitney, thank you very much. In other news, two empty Union Pacific train cars derailed last night. That makes it the third derailment in just over a month. It happened near the intersection of Sprague Avenue and North Havana Street. 
A spokesperson with Union Pacific said there were no injuries and the cars were not damaged. They say they're still investigating the cause of this. Well, last month, six Union Pacific rail cars derailed inside the company's Spokane yard. And then less than 24 hours later, two other train cars derailed in the same yard. Well, coming up in our six o'clock hour, we'll look into what the Federal Railroad Administration is doing to investigate. Spokane Valley Police tracked down an inmate who walked away from Valley Hospital. Officers arrested Shannon Morley early this morning in Spokane Valley near University Road and Sprague Avenue. Morley was receiving medical treatment at the hospital and then left without permission on Sunday. He was originally in jail for trafficking stolen property. And lawyers for the woman charged in a massive data breach at Capital One is asking a judge to release her from federal custody. Paige Thompson, who is transgender, says it's unsafe for her to remain in jail with men, and she says it's a threat to her mental health as well. Thompson is a computer programmer from Seattle. She was arrested last month after the FBI said she took personal information from more than 100 million Capital One applicants. A hearing is scheduled for Friday on whether she will remain in jail until her trial. In recent weeks, police around the country have foiled multiple alleged mass shooting plots. New, newly released body cam video shows a 15 year old being handcuffed in Florida. He posted online that he was going to bring an assault rifle to school. His mother insists it was a joke, but it's no joke to authorities. Her son is facing a felony charge. Another man was arrested in Indiana after a friend reported him for allegedly planning to carry out a mass shooting at a church. Someone who's already thinking about it will accelerate those plans when they see the one, the one before that. And that's why this appears to be a contagion. Well, experts say in most cases, suspects will signal that they may be planning something. A lot of times they'll post that online. So if you see a sign like that, the FBI is urging you to report it to local police. Police have arrested a man who's accused of secretly filming two women in a changing room at a North Spokane clothing store. Creme Cheese Mark Hanrahan has more on that arrest now. Hi, Mark. Good afternoon, guys. Police want to get the word out about the suspect because they think there could be more victims. So take a look. Here is video of that suspect during his first court appearance earlier today. Witnesses say 29 year old Zachary DeBoer filmed shoppers at hut number eight on Division Street. Police say it happened yesterday afternoon. He quickly left the store after the women noticed that they were being filmed and both the victims and store employees actually chase after him and a good Samaritan was able to stop the suspect and detain him until police arrived. Well, police say they found several cell phones and other electronic devices at the time of the arrest and they took them as evidence. So coming up new at a five o'clock hour, we'll hear from the store's employees who saw it all happen for now, guys, I'll send it back to you. Thank you, Mark. Meantime, school starts next week and Spokane Public Schools just announced its new after school program. It's to help parents with some new early release Friday. Yeah, the program is going to give uh, elementary students supervised time to do activities and homework while still at school. Creme 2 Shana Waltower tells us more about the program and how parents say it will help. Yeah, as many of you know, it's the everyday families that are in the homes just like these are the ones that are most impacted by these changes this school year. But for many of them, they're saying this program could be the answer to many of their concerns. A lot of these kids already are, don't have parental supervision as it is. This was one concern from parent Jennifer Dilly when she first heard about the school's early release. Every Friday this year, elementary students will get out of school at 1.45 instead of the usual 3 o'clock. Sometimes I may have family members that can step in. A lot, that's a lot of it because I have a 11 and 10 year old. Earlier, the district indicated it would set up something for children whose parents can't pick them up that early for 20 of the 32 total early release Fridays. But now they've officially announced the shop. It may sound like it will be putting your kids to some hard labor, but no, it stands for snack, homework, and organized play. Ali Barrera, a spokesperson for the school district, says teachers will supervise students over games, homework, and other activities. Knowing that the start of school is quickly approaching, Dilly says it was a relief to hear about this new option. It was. It was good to hear that they had substitute or replaced and had a backup. She says she's used after school programs before, so she has faith that this one will work. It doesn't matter if you're a stay at home parent or if you work 
you know, four jobs a day. It, the, these programs do serve. Now, if you want your child to get out of school early, there will be buses running at 145 and then again at 3. Again, the shop will be available for 20 Fridays out of the year, but parents will still have to plan around the remaining 12. In Spokane, Shana Walltower, Crem2 News.